Hey, what's up guys? Chris with CT Golf Reviews here. This is part two of Fairchild Wheeler. Last week I did the black course. This week is the red course, uh, which apparently is a little bit more player friendly. So we're going to get out there and uh, we're going we're gonna to have fun. The red course at Fairchild Wheeler is a little bit more open, but a lot more hilly than the black course. The red course demands accurate tee shots, which will leave most golfers with mid to short irons for their approach shots. Trust me, I was hitting 310 yard drives and I was getting eaten alive by those approach shots, especially on the green. The red course has some tough greens that will make most golfers double and triple check the brakes. Don't let it fool you. The red course does have 6,568 yards of golf from the back tees. It's got a par of 72. Course rating is a 71.0 and the slope is 124. A little bit more challenging than the black course, but it is equally as fun. I would also recommend checking out Vasi Snack Bar after your round. Go and grab a bite to eat. Or you can go into Tommy's Grill and get a couple of drinks with your friends after your round. Red course is a hell of a lot more open than the black course. Uh, the shots are more straightforward, I, I, I can say that, but I'm actually playing worse than I was earlier on the black course. Uh, I've had decent drives, but that's just about it. My short game is kind of struggling right now, with the exception of maybe like one or two really, really lucky chips. But the round is about half over. I'm on hole 11 right now, so I guess we're going to just keep going and... Uh, it, see what happens and yeah I'm, I'm gonna do driver off the deck
I can't believe that worked. That is right, Rockstar. Well, we are about to tee off on the last hole here at the Red Course of Fairchild Wheeler. Before I do, as usual, I want to say, if you like the video, definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, get the notifications whenever I do a new course video. I, 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 I'm still mad over that uh, hole-in-one opportunity miss that I had from, from last week. So... I'll make it up though. I'll make it up. One more hole. Let's do this. I mean, come on. You know I had to put it. And that wraps it up for the red course here at Fairchild Wheeler. Time to get back and do the final review. Okay, guys. Time to review the red course of Fairchild Wheeler. First off, again, I want to say thank you to Steve for letting me come in and play the, the rounds and review the course. I had a lot of fun. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention last week, because I started out with the staff... Uh, giving them a seven. I forgot to mention the kid who brought me from the pro shop to the bus when I made the bus, like just in time. I don't remember your name. I believe it was was it Brett, Brian, Drew, Johnny, Nick. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> didn't have to do that. You did. You waited for me uh, at the clubhouse. I was you know I was cleaning everything up and you know getting everything together. And I I forgot to mention that last week and I'm sorry. So. Uh, kudos to you, but I don't have to talk about staff because we are on the same course. This is week two. Again, I wish I knew what the starter's problem was, but the actual, the, the second starter that I had when I started uh, the red course was a lot nicer, a lot happier. So kudos. I like you. Let's get into the layout of the course. I want to say right off the bat, I wasn't trying to, uh, to not film shots. It's just certain certain shots wouldn't have worked and i picked up a lot because i ended up in the bunkers i was told specifically to stay out of the bunkers because they were new so i didn't want half of my video being me picking up a ball and dropping it somewhere but i do like how the course is set up i can say right now when these bunkers are done they're going to be really difficult uh they're in good positions on the greens they're deep some have the really high walls they're going to be a lot of fun the rough is is fairly easy to get out of. The greens are, are a lot more wide open, but strategy is a key in these greens, you know, in the fairways and stuff. Uh, you can hit 15, you know, 350-yard drives, and your short game better be on point with these greens. The hole placements were pretty difficult, I will say. The uh, actual layout of the course, though, they have four what they call hill holes, and I at first thought he was saying hell holes, which they might as well be. But these canyons, it's like you're hitting over a freaking ravine, and it's 1, 9, 10, and 18. The front nine and the back nine, it's like they, they start on it and they end on it. So in a way, it's like the same kind of shot. And when I hit the ball, I, I try to kill it. Like I said last week, I was legitimately trying to go from tee box to green. It was not working. So the hills are a little difficult, but it's okay because they're not blind like the black course. That's another thing. I like how this course is a lot more flat, it's a lot more open, and there's no blind shots that you would be at risk of hitting anyone with. So I did want to add that in there. It is a lot more wide open. The uh, 
it's it's fairly easy. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's straightforward, legitimately. Barely any dog legs, straight shots, hills come into play, but but it's all right. It's nothing that you can't do. As an amateur golfer, I would say this is probably the easier course out of the two, even though for some reason I score higher on this one than I did the black course. Anyway, that's just me. So the layout of the course, I'm going to give a six. The scenery, on the other hand, I'm giving a four because I kid you not, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, there is nothing to see. You're literally in an open field. You've got maybe the hill holes where you've got a little bit of a view of like, you know, over the the fairways and everything. But once you hit the peak of the hill, there is nothing to see. There's trees and it's open field. And I mean that in the nicest way because it made me stop and think like, I wonder what this course was before it was a golf course. Maybe it was a farm. Maybe it was a, maybe it was property that belonged to somebody. I know Bridgeport's got some history in it. Also, I I do uh, have to remind you guys, too, this course goes into Fairfield. So there's Fairfield and then there's Bridgeport. It's right on the line. So that's another cool aspect. It's like, you got to wonder, like, where are you teeing off in Fairfield and where are you teeing off in Bridgeport? I want to know where the exact line is so I can say, I hit a ball from there to there and it crossed towns. You know, you could literally joke and say, wow, dude, you hit that one town over and you're like hitting it 45 feet. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, there's really nothing to see there. Uh, I, I, I did like some, you know, tiny aspects of the course. I like how uh, the there was this one hole that kind of reminded me of Blue Fox, the first hole of the white course, I believe, where it's like it's flat, but you can see the green kind of protruding over the land a little bit. I thought that was really nice. Unfortunately, though, and I'm trying to pick out the good stuff. I got to give it a four for, for the scenery. Uh, you know, the, the course isn't really that hard either. Uh, again, not rating difficulty, but it's, it's, it's easier than the black course on paper. To me, I don't know why I shot better on the black course than I did the red course. So, but then again, that's just me. Again, I was trying to kill my ball. I was trying to drive it like, like nobody's business. As a matter of fact, you'll notice I don't have it. I don't think I have it with me. I don't. But you'll notice I was using one T for both games. And uh, I'm basically going to try. I don't I don't have it on me. I don't think I have it. No, wait, do I? Hold on. Might be in my pocket. Yes. This T right here, I am going to use this until it breaks. This I, this has lasted me 20 games, I think. So, yeah. There would literally be times when I'd hit the ball off of the off of this tee and it'd fly somewhere and I would take the time and find it. So I like it. It's my lucky tee. Almost indestructible. I love it. So the course, you know, it, it'll be difficult for some, probably not difficult for most because of the fact that it's nice and straightforward. So my overall score for the red course at Fairchild Wheeler is going to be a 6.5. I I really, I, I really wish it had more of a scenic aspect to it. I think that would have affected the score a lot more. Unfortunately, it doesn't. The the score could possibly change, though. I mean, I can't change it. It's already set in. But I think something that could have altered it would have been if the if I was able to play the bunkers. But that's not in my control. I I feel like that would have been something that could have uh, uh, altered my you know my 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 thought. But otherwise, can't really say too much. Can't really complain. I had a great time. I do want to say really quickly. Anyone who plans on playing the course, uh, if you've never been out there before, check it out. The you know check out the restaurant. the 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 people in the restaurant are really nice. The people at the bar are really nice. You know they're they're really welcoming. Go into the pro shop, take a look around. I actually thought it was really cool. They have a caddy shack, a little like uh, I wouldn't really say it's like a uh, ode to caddy shack, but it it looked like a, yeah they had the mo- the movie poster right there, and they had a couple of things that had to do with uh, Bushwood and all that. So pretty cool little touch plus the history they have history of the course all over the place so well guys that's uh that's it for the review for the red course i'm chris with ct golf reviews i'll see you next time